Hello and welcome to episode number two of Making Materials with PBR Painter. This is going to be a fairly quick video in which I'm going to show you how to paint decals onto your materials. So we're just going to be covering the basics so that you can then apply it to your more complex materials. All right, so let's get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the cube and I'm just going to create a plane just to keep it nice and simple. And I'm going to rotate that in the X by 90 degrees just so we have a simple surface to work on. All right, and I'm gonna add a new material and then set it up for PBR Painter. Now, what I'm gonna do is use a bricks material as a background, and the way I'm gonna do that is just gonna add a new layer called bricks. And I'm gonna use this texture import tool to import all of my brick textures. So I've already got it set up here, so I'm just gonna select the ones that I want, and I'll put a link in the description showing where I downloaded these textures. So once they're downloaded, sorry, so once they're imported, now they're all added to the channels and I can just refresh the material and I have the bricks ready to go. Okay, so now to the main part of the video, which is the decal. So adding a new layer and calling it decal. I'm going to leave this layer type the same, but I'm going to change this to painted. Now the painted layers are basically set up for decals. So you want to use a resolution that's not going to look bad on your material. I'm going to use 2K. For now because that will look fine for this now you may want to use 32-bit float the main reason you want to use that is if you're using the normal channel say you're bumping up your decal or if you're using height if you're using cycles because it does help to kind of smooth the slopes on your bumps or your displacement so I'm going to turn that on okay so now that I've added my decal layer if I just click refresh material it's ready to go so I can just paint over the top and it's basically set up with this color channel set to painted, which means you can just kind of change the color, the color to whatever you want and then paint wherever you want. So that's kind of cool. But what we're going to do is actually set it up so that the brush has a decal texture. So we're going to go across to the brush settings panel and we're going to turn on brush texture. And you'll notice when you do that, it changes this color to white because it needs to be set to white so that it gets the accurate colors from the texture. Okay, so we're going to add a new texture and we're going to make sure this is set to image or movie as the type and we're going to make sure this is set to stencil. With those set up, all I need to do now is just import my image. And I'm just using the Blender logo to keep things nice and simple. All right, so once this is loaded in, we can hold shift and right click to change the size. We can move it with right click or you can hold control and right click to rotate it. Now, if you rotate it and you kind of want to reset back to the start, you can go into the uh, texture mapping down the bottom, not image mapping, and you can just set this angle back to zero and it will go back to the start. All right, so now that that's all set up, we can just hide this for now and then we can just paint it wherever we want. And it's as simple as that. So now we have a nice decal painted onto our brick wall and it's picking up all of the other channels from the brick other than the color at the moment now you may want to leave it like that if that's the look you're going for but you can go now and change all of these channels to get the kind of look that you want so i'm just going to get rid of this texture for a moment because it's kind of annoying and i'm going to go into these channels and actually set it up so it looks a bit different so as you can see it's it's picking up the roughness of the brick and also the normal so if i go in now and click on roughness and refresh again basically now it has a constant roughness and I can change that depending on what I want to do so you may want something glossy if you adjust the opacity of the roughness it will kind of be a mix between the brick and whatever you selected if you want to do that but for now I'm just going to leave it as something like that nice and simple all right so now I'm going to turn on the normal channel and I'm going to hit refresh and what it's going to do is it's going to look very very bad and that's because it has no normals going on and all it's doing is just hiding the normals from the bricks which you probably don't want to do because that's generally not going to look very good so the way we're going to fix that is just click combine normals and then refreshing again and now it's kind of back to where it was so probably what you want to do is when you turn the normal channel on, just click the combine normals on before you refresh to save having to kind of refresh twice. Okay, so now we can do things like add a constant bump like that. 
And all that does is just bumps it out of the surface as you'd expect. So that looks a little bit silly. So we can kind of bring the strength down to make it look a bit more realistic, just so it's kind of subtly bumping out of the surface like that. Um, we can obviously go into these channels and we can change this to whatever we want. So for example, if we want to go procedural for normals, we hit refresh again. It's going to maintain that constant bump, but now it's going to add this kind of procedural bumping on top of that constant bump. So first thing we can do is bring the strength right down because that looks ridiculous. And now, as you can see, you've kind of got these procedural bumps over the top of the constant bumps, which are also over the top of the brick. So it's kind of combining all three into one. So you may want to add kind of a really fine bump effect if you kind of want to go for that sort of look. And then that kind of looks a little bit like kind of vinyl look. Sometimes vinyl has these little bumps. So you may want to do something like that. Now, the other cool thing you can do in the normal channel is you can change the underlying normal strength. So this option will appear when you click combine normals. And as the name suggests, this basically changes the strength of the bricks, but only where you've painted. So for example, if we start to drop this, as you can see, it's kind of hiding these normals underneath. So that's really cool because if you kind of go something like 0.5, it kind of looks like it's a bit thick and it's kind of, you can see the normals, but it's kind of masking them a little bit, which could be kind of a cool effect. Um, and you can go all the way down to zero, which you probably don't want to do, but that's just back to the start where we've got completely hiding the normals. You can even go the other way. So if you want to put this right up, you can actually make it stronger where you've got the decal. I don't know if you'd ever want to do that, but you can do it. But now I'm going to put it at something like 0.7, so it's kind of just showing those normals through. Now, I really like this effect when you put this down and you bring it back up. It almost looks like it's kind of shrink wrapping around the surface. And you can kind of play around with that and get the look that you want. Alright, so we're going to leave it at that. Um, that covers the basics of decal painting. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is I'm using an image with a transparent background. This is the best way to do decals. If you have something with a black background, you can in the layer masks, you can change the mask using option, which basically tells it how to mask. You can change it from alpha to color. Bear in mind, if you have any black on your image, it's going to think that that's basically needs to be masked and it will kind of mask things based on the intensity of the color. So generally it's best to have these decals set up with a transparent background. All right, so one more thing before I finish. Obviously when you're at this point, if you want to kind of modify the image, you can just do that with the standard painting tools. So for example, you can do smear and you can kind of drag it. If you kind of want to make it look like it's kind of melting down the, down the wall, you can kind of do that and get some really fun effects if you kind of want to have that sort of thing. And as you can see, it just maintains that nice blending with the bricks um, underneath. Uh, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you get the point. You can kind of edit it like that. The other thing you can do is you can add layer masks. So you can add more masks to make this a bit more realistic. So for example, if you want to make it look a bit worn, you may want to add a procedural mask. And if we just refresh, what that's going to do is it's going to kind of add this kind of procedural masking to the image. Um, you, know, you can go into the stack. So just clicking the preview stack button and you can play around with that. In general, if you've got these kind of hard edges, it can look a little bit weird if you add a procedural mask. So I'm just kind of playing around with these settings. One thing you might want to do is after you've added your procedural, if you go back into the painted layer mask and then just go to Arrays, Alpha, put the strength down. You kind of go around the edges, just sort of soften the edges a little bit. And you probably want to take a bit more time than this. But if you soften the edges, it will kind of pick that up in the procedurals, which I'll show in a second. So if I do that, And then I go into the color ramp. You can then kind of bring that in and it will kind of degrade from the edges. So I don't know, this is going to look ridiculous. 
but you can do something like that. If you want to make it look like it's kind of old and worn and like barely visible, you can have that effect like that as well. And obviously you play around with these color ramps, you can get the exact look that you're kind of going for. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm not going to muck around anymore. So you get the point. Lots of masks you can add, lots of different things you can do to paint decals and to make them look really cool and highly customizable and blend really nicely with your materials underneath. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you got something from it and I hope you can apply it in your own work. And with that, I'll leave it there and I hope to see you in another video. Cheers.